Welcome to Enactus World Cup 2020. This week, we've experienced a business breakout session to lead change, defining action for climate, oceans, equality, the future of higher education, work, and the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. In the next Lead Change Together session, we will hear from Enactus board members Case Krytov and Gonzalve Bick. CEO of XPRIZE, Anusha Ansari, Enactus Chief Innovation Officer, Terry Torek, Deepak Chopra, and keynote, Ian Bremer. It's going to be an action-packed session you will not want to miss. But now, we're at the final four and awards session. From hundreds of national presenting teams, 32 were crowned national winners. And from there, they moved on to the top 16. Now, we're here with the final four. And in this session, you will hear from two of those final four. But before you do, a little something special. As you may have noticed, everything happens fast at the Enactus World Cup. There's even a session named Accelerator. So in that spirit of speed, we've got the Alumni Action Accelerator Top 77 Fast Pitch. A great reminder that the Enactus experience does not end at college. Let's go now to Enactus alumni Bradley Heslop and PJ Mystery as they share the Alumni Action Accelerator Top 77 Second Pitch. Hi everyone. Indeed, Adesina, the Enactus experience does not end in college. And in fact, in August, Enactus alumni gathered at the annual hackathon Action Accelerator to share 26 new ideas they have that they've created after college to achieve the global goals for sustainable development. Diverse entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs from organizations beyond Enactus, including One Young World and the Circle of Entrepreneurs, were supported by teams and mentors from around the world to overcome challenges they were facing to scale and inevitably help achieve the United Nations global goals. The teams crafted 77 second pitches at the end of the hackathon and just moments ago, the top three presented live. And it was, it was an exciting final round. These top three were Riyadh with Life Design for Work, a Google-born initiative helping individuals define their passions and purpose and connect it to action. Focus on SDG 4 and quality education. Lawrence with Green Impact, a digital learning platform helping companies and individuals offset their carbon footprint in the Philippines. Focus on SDG 13, climate action. And Trevor with Monkiri, an accessible e-learning app focused on financial literacy and inclusion, driving SDG 8, decent work and economic growth. While every alumni and business partner who participated this year is a winner, just one idea was ultimately chosen by the Enactus World Cup audience through a live vote. And so the Action Accelerator Innovator of the Year from the Philippines. Congratulations to Lawrence with Green Impact. We also, we also share the final pitches on LinkedIn and all social media channels. Find us by searching Action Accelerator on LinkedIn. Let's continue to accelerate action together. Thank you. All right, awesome. Keep up the great work. We're going to share the winning pitches on LinkedIn and social channels everywhere. Hashtag we all win. Okay, next up in the category 30 and above from the Enactus University of New England in Australia, congratulations to Enactus alum, Joanna Newton. And from Dalhousie University in Canada, Enactus alum, Akram Alotumi. Next up, we have Enactus alumni under 30 from the University of Toronto, St. George, Canada, Enactus alum, Nuha Siddiqui. And from the Sri Ram College of Commerce in India, congratulations to Enactus alum, Shiv Bunsal. Thank you to all alumni, and thank you for your active support of Enactus and helping grow our digital community, including the Enactus LinkedIn group. Now, with outstanding alumni like these, it's easy to see why Enactus partner KPMG has been an ardent supporter of Enactus since 1990 and its work in over 22 countries. That long partnership reflects KPMG's dedication to lifelong learning, literacy, 
and education. KPMG supports Enactus in another critical way as well. They certify that all the voting that goes on around the world to choose the Enactus World Cup teams is valid and verifiable. That's no small task. Here to share more about how they do that very important work, Brad Sprong, National Tax Leader for KPMG Private Enterprise. On behalf of KPMG and our 219,000 partners and professionals around the world, serving clients in 147 countries, congratulations to each of you. KPMG collaborates with Enactus, given our mutual interest in developing next generation leaders with a head for business. We are committed to lifelong learning and have collaborated with Enactus for more than 20 years to help students learn the necessary skills, become the next socially responsible business leaders. KPMG professionals are proud to serve on 15 Enactus boards and support the growth of Enactus around the world. I am honored to represent KPMG, which serves as presenting sponsor and official score of an Actus World Cup. In my role, I reviewed the results as produced by the online scoring system and identified no irregularities. As official score, we work with Enactus leaders to develop a voting process that ensures accuracy and transparency. The voting materials were delivered to us, we verified the results, and now have presented them to the sponsor. Again, on behalf of KPMG, congratulations to all of you. You should be very, very proud of the programs you've implemented and the contributions you're making to our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Brad Sprong. Teams will present in the order in which the league drawing occurred just hours ago. The teams drew in the following order. Number one, Egypt. Number two, Brazil. Number three, India. And number four, Canada. Special thank you to the team's academic advisors and Enactus country staff for their dedication, collaboration, and support to team success. The first two teams will present now. The second two teams will present in the finale after the lead change keynotes. We now welcome to Enactus World Cup 2020, the first Final Four team representing Egypt from El Azhar University. Here now is their 12 minute final presentation. Pardon these smart, the precious. What you have seen right now is not just a scene. It is reality. A reality of people whose lives were totally transformed into the happiest version. These smiles took a year of perseverance, challenges, innovation, and success. We will show you the journey of how 12,000 kilometers of traveling, 19,000 hours of work, and $5.5 million of revenue have brought happiness to the lives of 250,000 people. We are in Actis, Egypt, and we're proud to present our project, Childhood Zen. They say, through the crack, the light gets in. And we are here to showcase how our entrepreneurial light has revolutionized Karun Lake, a lake that once contributed with 55% of the shrimps nationwide and for years provided over 4,000 people with job opportunities. Then all of a sudden in 2010, the lake productivity went all the way downhill to less than 10% when the lake was struck by a parasite known as Isopoda. Throughout our comprehensive research, we found out the number of the operating boats in the lake was decreased from 1,500 to only 50 boats. Hence, only 3% are still practicing fishing in the lake, leaving thousands of fishermen unemployed and with no option but to immigrate to sustain their basic needs. Women also started to struggle and headed to work peeling shrimps, working for 12 hours to earn barely 40 cents a day. According to the UNDP, that is 55% under the poverty line. <laughs> Furthermore, we came across another heartbreaking issue, children. Parents push hundreds of them into labor, depriving them from their right to education. 
One of these children told her that he suffers every day as he carries on his shoulder the burden of being responsible for a whole family. Imagine your own child going through a whole chain of trauma just to earn a few pennies that will feed him and his family for a day. It was such a big challenge, but not bigger than our perseverance and eagerness. We, in Actis Egypt, accepted the challenge and decided to revolutionize these people's lives. We conducted the needs assessment in which we found out that 800 women can peel almost 8 tons of shrimps a day, getting 4 tons of waste. This waste would usually dispose in the lake or fed to the ducks, making their taste tangent with shrimps. From here, a question popped into our minds. How can we use our entrepreneurial skills to transform this shrimp waste into a valuable product? The answer was simple, turn them into spices. So we began the first phase by doing 12 research trials in which we successfully produced 100% organic spices. Then we proceeded to the second phase in which we ran three tests on these spices, microbial, bacterial, and stability tests. And the results were extremely satisfying, which qualified us to get the accreditation from the Egyptian Ministry of Trade and Industry. Afterwards, we validated the spices market and found out that seafood spices are highly required in Egypt as we import over 70 Seven tons annually. The third phase revolved around teaching women the spice production process. So we empowered 800 women with 100 spice production units to produce one ton monthly, hence achieving self-sufficiency in the Egyptian market of spices. This mass production allowed us to take the right path with our brand positioning, using outbound lead strategy to get more than 15 channels, including restaurants, retail spice outlets, and food companies, penetrating the market with 100% organic spices. That is 40% cheaper than the market value in order to reach the best practice benchmarking. We had to reach full operational sustainability, so we contracted with Keylux to sustain the total distribution and scale the top of mind awareness for our consumers. And since e-commerce is now an irreplaceable part of the business, we collaborated with Amazon to be the sales growth hackers across the globe, generating a total revenue of $1 million. Despite this progress, our needs assessment confirmed that not just the fishermen couldn't provide food for the family members, but also the farmers living there. That's because the contaminated water decreased the crop's productivity to less than 50% causing 1,400 farmers to become unemployed. We saw an opportunity to solve this tragic situation by producing a fertilizer that will re-enhance the soil fertility. So, we analyzed the shells and found out that it contains chitazan, 100% natural fertilizer. In comparison to other chemical fertilizers, chitazan contains 3 times more nitrogen, 7 times more potassium, and 12 times more phosphorus. We then took the initiative to extract chitazan in labs. But the chemical process turned out to be extremely complicated for our beneficiaries. Hence, our R&D team innovated a new eco-friendly extraction method that is easily accessible for our beneficiaries. The interesting fact is that Chitozan increases the crop's productivity by 150%. So we established a commercial register to legally access the fertilizer's market with our groundbreaking product. And in order to secure the right strategic partner to scale this business nationally, we partnered up with the Egyptian Ministry of Agriculture, which provided us with 300 acres of land to start reclaiming. After penetrating the fertilizers market and positioning ourselves as essential key players, we started mass producing 5 tons of chai to zen annually, generating a total revenue of $2 million. This has impacted the lives of 1,400 farmers and increased their income by 320%. This isn't the end though. We realized there is more growth potential. So we boosted our project from a national to an international level by partnering with Hand in Hand Company in Belgium as they will purchase 2 tons of chai to zen annually for $1 million. This ongoing cash flow will ensure the sustainability of our business. As you can see, our product's dependency relies on the availability of the shrimp shells, and the lack of them will lead to a supply chain disruption. That's why we started establishing shrimp farms to create a closed-loop supply chain and build a self-sufficient enterprise. Then, we empower the beneficiaries with technical know-how sessions to build those farms from A to Z. So far, they have created 20 shrimp farms, producing 8 tons of shrimps annually. This is equivalent to the amount they used to produce before the crisis. However, according to the Egyptian National Research Center, Egypt is expected to reach day zero within 10 years, leaving above 100 million people with no access to water. 
So, we have created the RAS technology to help utilize the fresh water consumed by these farms, saving over 99% of the original amount of water used annually. This success opened the gateway to expand this project to three villages surrounding the lake, generating a total revenue of $1.5 million. Then we decided to take our project to a whole new level, expanding our acquired know-how to another country, Mozambique. We passed down our entrepreneurship to the beneficiaries there through online sessions. And by that, we have empowered over 90 people. Based on our business model, we're planning on becoming pioneers in this field and expanding this project to other two African countries by the end of 2021. We knew there was a lot yet to do, since children were still deprived from the right to education. According to the UNICEF, one out of every 10 children are involved in labor. But in the vicinity of the lake, it is four out of every 10 children are forced to go to work. Their hands are too small to carry such a burden. They look good holding a pencil. To put an end to this, we incentivize women to enroll their children back in schools, as every eight women do so will get one spice production unit. And eventually, we were able to save over 1,300 children from child labor and offer them what every child deserves, a future. During the implementation process, we were extremely worried when 13 of our team members tested positive for COVID-19. We realized how challenging it was for the medical staff to fight such a battle against a deadly virus with no cure. Since our work is driven from passion and care about our community members, there was no better time to innovate. Our R&D team discovered that Chitosan works as viral absorbent. It can filter and absorb particles up to 2 microns, whereas the virus itself is 35 microns. So, they were able to innovate a mask that includes Chitosan as a part of its filter. As per our competitive research, this mask is three times cheaper and works with the same efficiency as the N95 mask. Our unique ceiling point is that, at the time the N95 mask is used for only three days, our mask could be used for a whole month. Hence, it got accredited by the Egyptian Ministry of Health, achieving the ninth SDG. We immediately distributed the mask among 5,000 doctors, indirectly impacting the lives of 200,000 people. But before we wrap up, why don't we take a look at two more phases of our project? We decreased the isopoder rate to 50% in two months. Next year, the lake is expected to be isopoda-free and achieve two times of the productivity before the crisis. Not just that, we used the extracted chitosan to create a filter that could absorb water pollutants and suspensions, hence increasing the villagers' overall health for less than five cents. We have showcased our revolutionary project, a project that we have taken as an adventure to create a tangible and a sustainable change in these people's lives. We measure our lives not by how many years we live, but how many lives we impact. And through the last year, this is our impact. We expanded our entrepreneurship to 3,400 people, empowered 800 female entrepreneurs, and saved over 1,300 children from child labor. Reclaimed 1,000 acres of land and recycled 53 tons of shrimp waste. Partnered up with 10 national and international organizations. Created 20 shrimp farms, established three Shaitozan extraction hubs, and 100 spice production units. Created five up and running businesses, provided 670 job opportunities, and increased the average family income by 320%. And not just that, we also saved $2.3 million and generated a total revenue of $5.5 million. We fulfilled 10 SDGs, directly impacted 8,550 people and indirectly impacted 250,000 people. And most importantly, we protected the lives of 5,000 doctors and nurses by providing them with our Chitosan face mask. Based on our installations, our projects are expected to generate a total revenue of $13 million by 2023. We tell ourselves every single day to shoot for the stars, to be the best we can be. Good is not good enough if it can be better. And better is not good enough if it can be the best. We all face challenges every day. But the real challenge is to create a better world for us all. We challenge certainty. Stood in the face of the inevitable. Because our fate is in our hands. We are in Enactus Egypt. Thank you to the Enactus team from Egypt. We now welcome the Enactus team representing Brazil from Federal University of Pará. Their 12-minute presentation begins now. A river's path is never easy. 
a river faces many obstacles, but nothing stops it from following its path. Change is inevitable. In a scenario where everything is changing, we invite you to sail towards the world that we envision for us all. But first, we must leave behind everything that doesn't match the reality we want. At Enactus UFPA, we act for a world with equality for people and responsibility for the environment. In September 2019, Enactus launched the One Race for Oceans competition in order to engage teams to develop solutions for the oceans crisis. That's when we challenge ourselves to become part of it. Did you know that the Amazon has the second most polluted river by plastic in the world? This huge problem repeats itself all over the country, where most of the waste discarded in the urban rivers is plastic. Guess where all that ends up? If we continue down this path, by 2050, our oceans will have more plastic than fish. The decomposition of this material generates microplastic, directly affecting marine life and causing serious health problems. So, in December 2019, we created Anaman to stop the plastic flow in the Amazon rivers by capturing and upcycling this material. The first month, we developed a low-cost technology designed to fill it up to 20 meters of thread per bottle, resulting in a plastic thread three times stronger and 77% cheaper than alternatives available on the market. Then, it can be used to create new products. This PET thread is the basis for our eco barrier that was developed with business mentors and experts on marine life and sanitation. It works like this. The thread is welded to pipes that are attached to urban rivers, creating a net which retains submerged and floating waste, capturing plastic before it reaches the oceans. Our eco barrier has a biofilter to absorb chemical impurities and to ensure marine life preservation we we'll adapt the technology to each local ecosystem as a way to guarantee the transit of all species. The waste collected ensures raw material for the next one. We sell them through two main channels. To the government, which lacks access to cost-efficient technology to solve the problem of plastic waste in urban rivers, and to ESG-focused private companies. Validating our business model, we sold 33 eco-barriers to be installed until the end of the year. We have renowned clients, such as the Federal Government, Bank of Brazil Foundation, Ford Fund, and Amanco Vavin. Collectively, these systems have the potential to improve urban sanitation for over 1 million people. We already installed five eco-barriers, which are impacting everyone who lives around them. After product market fit, we will insert at-risk people in the installation process, generating decent income with a human-centered design approach. With our eco-barriers, we are stopping ocean-bound plastic waste, which means less water, electricity, and oil wasted, as well as a reduction in CO2 emissions. Nine months ago, none of this existed. Today, Anama is the seventh best initiative in Latin America to solve the ocean's crisis. We are also chosen to be at the One Race for Oceans final round to show we can scale our solution and impact not only the Amazon, but the entire world. But that isn't the only obstacle we face in our river's path. In the Amazon, social inequality results in lack of opportunities for us women. Even when we get a chance, most female workers don't receive a worthy income, and this becomes worse in the slums. As a woman, I feel every day how opportunities are different for us. In Costura E, I met other women, like Eliana, one of so many other slum residents who face daily gender inequality and its consequences. It's a tough reality that requires them to be stronger. Because of this, we work to empower them as seamstresses in the sustainable fashion industry, promoting a fairer supply chain. With training modules in sewing and entrepreneurship, they learned from workers in the local fashion market how to channel their own creativity to transform fashion industry waste into opportunities for income generation. Since 2018, in Costura e Studio, seamstresses lead the design and production of exclusive collections, dedicating themselves to slow fashion, creating eco bags that carry the story of strong women and of an Amazon in constant improvement. We sell the collection directly to customers and through resellers, which include the main old fashioned players in the Amazon 
our business model was validated into one of the largest incubation programs for impact businesses, ensuring financial sustainability and strengthening our value proposition. No wonder we're Brazil's sixth best social environmental initiative. Each eco bag costs an average of two dollars and are sold for nine. Profits are split between the seamstresses and costurae, so we can be reinvesting in the business. This year, we've increased our numbers and sold over 200 units. This was what we did until March. A gente foi impactado de cheio, porque a, a maioria da, da nossa renda aqui é do turismo e vem dos restaurantes. In Brazil, the pandemic has hit us hard, as the already existing social problems are getting worse. Adapting to this reality is especially difficult for those who have always been fighting for survival. I knew that together we could design solutions and improve our communities. Anaman reinvented itself, but without neglecting its mission of reducing plastic waste. Apply our circular economy principles, we upcycled plastic bottles to produce face shields that cost less than a dollar to make and are sold for two dollars each. This price is 60% cheaper than other alternatives, ensuring that everyone can afford it. The next step was putting our training process and sales channels online. A decentralization strategy allowed us to create multiple production hubs across the city. With delivery handled by the hub closest to orders, we were able to cut costs, ensure a higher profit margin, and get face shields to more people in less time. With that business model, we sold over 1,400 face shields, generating more than $4,000 in revenue. On average, each producer gains in just three days over $120 in income, which corresponds to an amount higher than the government's emergency financial aid. Costura started producing cloth masks, and to reduce health risks to the seamstresses, we adopt a decentralized production model, moving sewing machines from the studio into each of their homes. The number of orders skyrocketed. Therefore, we increase our production capacity. In just one month, Costura E added eight more seamstresses to the production team, purchased three new industrial sewing machines, and produced nearly 6,000 masks. My dream is to build my own house in my hotel. Vou conseguir, se Deus quiser, só com o dinheiro que eu ganho fazendo confecção nas máscaras e eu estou conseguindo fazer o meu cantinho, o meu cantinho da minha costura. However, the conventional masks only solve part of the problem. The obligatory use of masks meant another obstacle the deaf people face in communicating. With this in mind, we developed an adapted version that used upcycled PET bottles, allowing lip reading and helping them effectively communicate. This idea became a reality thanks to Ford Found Support, that chose us as one of the best initiatives to mitigate the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, investing $1,000 in Costura E. Due to the overwhelming demand for adapted masks, we noticed the opportunity to expand sales to other affected groups. This way, we provide more help to those who have been harmed by the new reality, selling more than 2,000 units. Over the past 12 months, with a diversified portfolio, Costura E accumulated over $10,000 in revenue. Seamstress has gained over $4,000 in income, which represents an increase of 274%. More than numbers, it means that we are on the right path to become a consolidated business impact. Next, we launched a crowdfund campaign to reduce the effects of COVID-19 in the Amazon. In just eight days, our campaign raised over $6,000. Then, we teamed up with local businesses to ensure essential items got to those who need it then the most. We were selected to receive a 4,600 euro grant from the Francophone University Agency 
enabling us to distribute adapted masks and face shields. All this made it possible for more than 9,000 people to receive over 5 tons of food, personal protective equipment, hygiene items and 5 hand washing stations installed with a Manakatu rainwater harvesting system. With the investment of $15,000 by our partners, Anama is building what will be the Amazon's first plastic waste processing plant. This way, we'll be able to work with other types of plastic and launch even more products with the materials collected by our eco-barriers. As for Costura E, we partnered up with Brazil's Postal Service and the federal government to transform male-made uniforms and other scraps of fabric into new collections. We will also expand the decentralized system, increasing our production capacity and generating income for other women, starting with nine new seamstresses. Since the last World Cup, we've established a Manacatu as an independent social business that left a legacy in our team. And through its rainwater systems, it provides access to clean water to over 7,000 people. A legacy that challenges us to generate more impact to be resilient and create a better world for us all, even when facing a global pandemic. This story was built by 47 entrepreneurial leaders, one faculty advisor, and many partners. Nearly 15 million people were inspired by our message, and our economic impact surpassed $100,000, helping us impact 213,207 lives. While the government recognized our effort to lead progress in our state with a certificate of honor. We're from the Amazon, and the rivers are our inspiration. And as the whole world resignifies itself, we'll keep on striving for the real change. Thank you, Enactus team from Brazil. Later today, you will experience the team presentations from India and Canada. At this time, it's our pleasure to go live to Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, to introduce Mike Schmidt, Director of Education and Global Community Development for the Ford Motor Company Fund. Well, thank you, and wow, as always at the World Cup, what a tremendous showing of entrepreneurship and passion for making the world a better place. And you know, at Ford Motor Company and Ford Motor Company Fund, we care deeply about that issue. And so I'm honored to be here with you to celebrate the accomplishments of all of the Enactus World Cup 2020 teams. I'd like to say a special congratulations to this year's top four, Egypt, Brazil, India, and Canada. Job well done. And you know, in watching uh, the two videos we just saw, the, the first two presentations, and really in thinking about all of the uh, presentations I've watched this week, um, I'm struck by two thoughts. First, uh, you know, we talk a lot about innovation in the work we're doing, and of course innovation is important, but you know, it's just, it really isn't enough. If you think about the projects that really work, it's really all about ingenuity, which is the process of applying innovate, innovative ideas to solve problems and meet challenges. And in the end, that's really what it, it's all about, right? I mean, it's not enough just to come up with a creative idea. We've also got to come up with a way to implement that idea to change people's lives and make the world a better place. And you know, the second thing that occurs to me repeatedly as I watch all these amazing presentations this week is that we talk a lot in business uh, and here at Enactus about measuring impact. And of course, that's critically important. We have to do it. But you know, there are so many impacts that take place in the work that you all do uh, that can't be measured. You know, I think about all of the Enactus uh, students that I've met over the years, and I'm struck by the fact that for all of them, it's been a tremendous impact on their lives to work on the social enterprises that they have through Enactus. Uh, you know, and it really, in fact, lights a fire under them that uh, drives them to be involved in their community and make a difference for the rest of their lives. And that's an impact we can't measure, but that's critically important. In the end, who can really measure a single act of kindness? Uh, it's impossible to do, but it's really the most important thing. And so with that, I just wanna say uh, congratulations to all of the teams uh, this week at the World Cup. Uh, thank you for what you're doing. It's important, uh, it's making a difference, and it's truly inspiring to all of us. Mike, thank you so much. <laughs> no, we share your enthusiasm. 
We completely and deeply appreciate the support of you, the Ford Motor Company and the Ford Fund as we celebrate these and all of our teams, but your enthusiasm is not only contagious, your vision is an inspiration. We know your goals are to strengthen communities to make, help make people's lives better through programming that empowers people, encourages and funds innovation and promotes social mobility and at Anactus, I can share we are deeply humbled by your support. You know, our partnership with the Ford Fund began just seven years ago when we launched the Ford College Community Challenge or Ford C3 with just six teams. Today we've expanded to 11 and we have supported thousands of students and impacted nearly 300,000 people with your support. Of course, with you, Mike, personally, we've also introduced the Ford Mobility Innovation Challenge providing $240,000 in grants to 15 teams to scale their work in clean transportation and mobility. And even more, because you and everyone at the Ford Fund so deeply believed in us and our teams and their impact, the Ford Better World Fund was established to reward the top four Enactus World Cup teams and country operations. And we are proud of that. But while our objectives are aligned, and the funding you provide is incredibly significant. It's the alignment of your values and that kindness that you just expressed with those at Enactus, that's what is most powerful. The many times you and your colleagues have made time to meet with students when traveling, meeting, guiding, and encouraging them personally has meant the world to them, and that too ripples. Those values were further demonstrated when you and your colleagues, Mike, reached out to us as the pandemic hit earlier this year, asking how the Ford Fund could support students. And from that, the Ford COVID Challenge was born, again, investing, not just funding, but also support in 14 teams in nine countries to help them help their communities at a time of urgent need. For all these reasons and more, I am deeply honored to present to you in the Ford Fund, the Enactus Global Champion Award for your outstanding support, your alignment, and your values. Thank you for your support of the Enactus mission, for all you have done, and for driving into the future with us. Thank you so much, God, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs>